community college in the San Francisco area in the United States. Um, we have 9,000 students learning across uh, over 100 programs and uh, degree certificates. And we have just moved all of them online like every other campus in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, my background is in learning technologies. I have a doctorate in educational technology. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself often the odd person with that background saying, stop learning all this new technology. Let's focus on the basics of what we know and uh, build a foundation from there. So you're suggesting that it's about learning, not about technology. Absolutely. Uh, it is not about any tool that you're going to bring in at this point. Uh, we are transitioning from full-blown emergency to the second stage of the emergency. Right. But that is the time to think about the pedagogy that you're utilizing in your course and not bringing in a new tool. This isn't, okay, well, the emergency is over. Let's bring in lecture capture software or proctoring software or, you know, some other tool uh, related to, to grading or other pieces. This is a perfect time for us to think about our practice and how our practice can better affect our students. And that happens through human communication the proper way, not uh, putting in some app or third party so, I, I mean, I totally agree with you. The technology is not going to save us. Ed tech is not going to save us. The pedag so, so what's the first step then? So what if, if it's not, hey, I need to find a tool so I can do my multiple choice online, or I need to find this thing that's going to be able to allow me to do exactly what I do face to face so that I don't have to change anything. What's the step then? How do we, how do, we do it the other way? So we need to think about what the difference is in the modality that we're, we're learning from. So Dave, you're, you're making these very short uh, videos with people and we don't want to go over 10 minutes. We, we don't want to go over five minutes, certainly not over 10 minutes. If that's the case for this, for a group of people who this is their focus, this is what they're interested in, this is where they, where they get their, their inspiration from, then why would we be doing a different practice for pieces that are, for, for students who are not yet in love with this subject matter or the subject matter is just a part of a pathway for them? Uh, also, you know, most of us are dealing with people, you know, ages uh, 17 to 22, their prefrontal cortex is still not fully developed. So the attention span is going to be more difficult. Why are we then putting three hour lectures on Zoom? Why are we thinking about lecture capture software? Why not make short movies like this? People are willing to forgive the aesthetic aspect of that um, in this moment. But if you watch a lecture capture, the aesthetic isn't that great either. So yeah. think about what it is you're truly trying to accomplish. And then why is that the tool you're given? And what could we do instead? It's much easier to turn on your iPhone, start recording, watch it and say, oh, wait a second, I went too long there. I can cut that up and, and try and redo that than it is to bring in one of eight or nine different softwares with all sorts of customizations and all sorts of headaches. Yeah, because the, the cognitive load of that is just awful. Like, there's a reason why I do these live, because mm -hmm. I hit go, I hit start, it's live, there's no stopping, it's going to be posted right away, and then I don't have to worry about it. It takes me literally 10 minutes to make a 10-minute video. Yeah. And then I get in and get out. If It's, it's never quite perfect, although I, I took the aesthetic critique of this show personally, I think you're just talking about me here. Um, <laughs> But, well, we, we have our blank walls behind us. You know, so. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So um, that works for bringing in the content. I agree with you. The short videos, I think, are way better. And I think they also allow you to focus on that one thing so that you can line up your, your other pieces so you can have a discussion about it. If it's only a seven-minute video, then the discussion lines up really nicely with that, right? Like Absolutely. It's easier to coordinate online. So what other tips do you have for people? Um, so, I mean, it really kind of goes into that basic point is look at what it is you wish to accomplish in the class. If you want to call it a learning outcome, a learning objective, or kind of the, you know, uh, the flow, the conclusion of that particular module or unit, where do you want to go? And then how are you going to best get there? So we were talking about kind of those, those elements of content. As far as communication is concerned, why would you utilize some sort of synchronous tool unless you want to bring those synchronous people together? So we don't need to bring people on Zoom so that a faculty member can lecture. And I find more often than not, the faculty member feels an expectation that that's what they're supposed to perform yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. this is the mode in which they feel comfortable. So what if we chunk that up? You make a couple videos with your mobile device or you don't make any videos at all. You put it in text and then you use the time to chat about it and you break people into groups and use the tool for what the tool could be. Um, or, you know, if, if the tool is struggling in that place, people have Zoom or Blue Button or other pieces out there. You know, there are other elements. Um, I saw an MFA program run for 15 years on email. 
uh, MFA <laughs> writing program. Yeah. Writing, which, you know, a, a place where you need to be able to critique and bring folks together. It ran 100% on email uh, until two years ago. So, and it, was, it didn't stop running on email because it wasn't working. It stopped because, you know, other forces came into, came into play there. So use what you feel comfortable with and what you know, and it's good to have an argument of why that works. Uh, but don't bother learning the new technology uh, because it's a, a fancy new tool. Now, that said, I'm going to just note one thing here. There are some foundational aspects to that. I would say a learning management system in this case is a foundational aspect, though. Blackboard or posting, Moodle or Canvas or whatever. Exactly. And that might mean as little as posting a syllabus there and yeah. just giving a home base and letting people, if you're in constant communication, people can be other places. If the community if the communication is not as constant, then per perhaps you need to be able to put a few more things in that space. So I'm gonna ask you a final question then. You've got a PhD in educational technology. One of the biggest things I hear from people is, what's the right way to do this? What does the research say? So my response is always, uh, there's no right way to do this. What's your perspective on that? I, that would be exactly what I would say. Um, it's, about, it's about the people, it's about the humans. So the connectivity of what we're doing is the case. So we have this term in the California Community Colleges, uh, substantive interactive contact. So that is what we are looking for with our online courses. Yet our modality is almost entirely asynchronous. So there are not Zoom sessions in the majority of online courses that start online. We're seeing with the courses we moved a lot more people who are expecting synchronous sessions. Uh, but what that means is your ability to do contact needs to happen in other modalities and it can be in an asynchronous fashion and it can happen in multiple place, places across the real web. So think about, there is no right way to do this, but if we get focused on specific tools, we'll find a lot of wrong ways to do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks so much, Roland. I really appreciate it. And uh, Thanks, for the Dave. rest of you who are following along, thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow.